Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everyone. This day will mark the end of the scourge of sickness and disease in your own life. It will mark the end of it in your own family. In the name of Jesus Christ. God has his times of visitation. And the midst of the year happens to be such times. Grace not to miss this time of divine visitation that's ordained for a turnaround in your life. Receive that grace now. Oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known thy power. In wrath, remember mercy. The midst of the year, June and July, with five months on either side of the divide. In the midst of the year, so it's annual, annually, annually, in the midst of the years, in the midst of the years. And it comes along with amazing treasures. Among which is the leveling out of every everlasting mountain on your path and clearing off every perpetual hill harassing your life. Therefore, whatever has refused to move and has been staring you in the face as an insurmountable mountain, my God will clear them off your path this time. Every long-standing disease, every long-standing pain, whatever has been holding on to you over the years and won't just let go. In the name of Jesus, today, which is part of the midst of the years, my God will level out all those mountains before you. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. And so shall it be. Yeah. Ask the Lord to speak to you today, everybody, wherever you are. Ask the Lord speak to me today. I want to hear from you, Jesus. I want to hear from you, Jesus. I want to hear from you, Jesus. I want to experience your touch in my life. I want an encounter with your word that will spark off a new beginning in my life. So let it be. And thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are all gathered today at the feet of Jesus to receive of him. Lord, let no one return without a definite encounter with you. In Jesus' precious name. Welcome again to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. And so shall it be. Give him a big hand of praise and get seated, please. Remember, the prophetic focus for the year is I am for signs and wonders. I am for signs and wonders. I and the children whom God has given to me, they are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of God, God of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Not that you have been ambitious. No, it's your makeup in redemption. Every child of God is redeemed a sign. The wind blows where it listens. You can't tell where it's, you can't tell where it's coming from or where it's going. And so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So every child of God is redeemed a sign to his world. Every child of God. The 
just like every child of God is redeemed for heaven. But he has to take responsibility to make it. No, you know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He has to take responsibility to make it. That's his destiny. But it never delivers without responsibility. Now, we are being redeemed from sickness and disease. But we have to take responsibility in the world to realize it. My son, attend to my word. Give ear to my sins. Let them not depart from your heart. From your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. They shall be life to them that find it and health to all their flesh. They have to take responsibility to lay hold on the world to sustain their healing right in Christ. Now, he through his poverty has made us rich. But we have to take responsibility through the covenant of giving to actualize our wealthy or prosperity right in Christ. We have to. Otherwise, we'll just be looking at it behind the glass wall without assessing it. We are for signs and wonders. But we have to take responsibility to, to realize it. Thou shalt take this rod in thy hand wherewith thou shalt do signs. You engage my word to command my acts. You engage my words to command my acts. You can't flow in the supernatural without engaging with my word. The rod of God is the word of God in the figure. Jesus is that rod. And is the living word of God. Now, do what my word says to do to command my signs. You can't operate in the realm of supernatural without engaging with what my word commands you to do. Can I hear your amen? That's why many things that Christ has provided for are not a reality in our life. Because just think because he has said it, then he will do it. Yes, he will, based on his word. Based only on his word. Based only on his word. Now, listen to this. This is a miracle service. Now, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a broken spirit who can bear. So you need a, you know, an empowered spirit to take command of your body. My wife will still remember one day, I said, now, let your spirit take command of your body. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. You can't have a weakly spirit and gain command of your body. Let your spirit now take command of your body. Because the spirit of a man will sustain it's infirmity. But a broken spirit who can bear. So you build spiritual capacity to command the supernatural. You do what? You build spiritual capacity to command the supernatural. You build spiritual capacity to command the supernatural. You build spiritual capacity to command the supernatural. Our teaching series for this month on Sundays is captioned Commanding Signs and Wonders on the Platform of a Reviver. And I'd like you to listen very well. Commanding Signs and Wonders from the Platform of a Reviver. A revival can be defined as a celebration of divine visitation. And the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty, so he manifests his might. He will save, so he saves souls. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will turn you to wonder. He will joy over you with singing. He will turn your life around like a dream of the night. At that time of his visitation. 
Sevaniah chapter 3 verse 17 and now go to verse 19. You see the wonders that follow his divine visitation. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee because I'm in your midst. And I will save her that halted and gather her that was driven out and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. He turned around. And at that time, will I bring you again restoration. Even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, said the Lord. Now, that's what we define as signs and wonders in a revival. A dramatic turnaround, a dramatic change of story. That's what happened. We are again in the midst of the year. A season of revival. A season of celebration of divine visitation. That's ordained to be, to launch us into a realm of supernatural manifestations. Don't miss your appointment with God in this season. You'll be glad you did. You'll be glad you did. Revive thy work, O God, in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known thy power. And wrath, remember mercy. And by this time, clear off all everlasting mountains on my path. And no perpetual he is tearing me in the face and harassing my destiny. And I will launch you into your high places as you keep engaging. That's God's agenda. A revival is a platform for signs, wonders, and diverse miracles among God's people. Please note that while core manifestation of a revival is massive salvation of souls. Every move of God on the earth is ordained to result in massive salvation of soul, which is his core business on the earth. Every revival is a move of the spirit and the Holy Ghost came primarily to make believers effective witnesses to the unsaved so they can be brought into the kingdom. And now watch, in the last years of Paul, uh, of Paul and all men, I mean, your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, upon your handmaidens will I pour my spirit. Amen. So, when you find the spirit of God moving, not only on the altar, but on the pews. When you find men and women, boys and girls, free and bond, everybody manifesting the spirit, then you know there's a revival. That's what you're having here. That's what you're having here. There are many, many people here by whose hands God has raised the dead. They are not ordained. They are not deacons. They are not elders. They are not pastors. They are not assistant pastors. They are not self ministers. They are just people with their heart for God. People with passion for God. Nothing else. Thou went test forth for the salvation of thy people. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 13. So it's going forth. It's for the salvation of his people. Who are his people? All souls are mine. How many? How many? Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4. All souls are mine. All souls are mine. All souls are mine. He went forth for the salvation of his people. Every move of God is primarily for the salvation of people. For the salvation. If it's not there, that revival is not genuine. All this revival of falling down to the ground, and that's no revival. Revival, genuine revival, is a massive salvation of souls. They fall to the ground, fall to the ground, and they stop falling. So the revival is finished. My God. 
People like games. They like religion. Amen. Fire! Fire on the open because nobody fell down. Fresh fire. First time on the earth. He thou went test forth for the salvation of thy people. You are not anointed because we are falling down. You are not. It's not. It's only a sign. Nobody fell down when Jesus was speaking. Are you more anointed than him? People can fall down. The Holy Ghost manifests anyway, but it's not a sign that you are anointed. Went test for for the salvation of their people. When the Holy Ghost came, we do on Pentecost, the fulfillment of Joel chapter two, verse twenty-eight to thirty. Three thousand people were sent to the kingdom. Then, by the manifestation of signs and wonders, which is not to show how anointed you are, he is to reap the harvest of the field. For some will not believe, as they see signs and wonders. So, signs and wonders are for drafting people into the kingdom. They are not for sure. They are not for sure. By that singular healing, 5,000 were added to the church. That's the purpose. Now, God wrote special miracles by the hands of the apostles and multitudes, they can't count them anymore, of men and women were added to the church. Acts chapter 5 and verse 14. Multitudes. The word of God came alive. I mean, power. And then, the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 6 verse 7. So you find out the the sole purpose of a revival is the drafting of multitudes into the kingdom. Can I hear your amen? amen. Now, in Acts 13, verse 44, and the next Sabbath, almost the whole city, that Sabbath must happen here in this prophetic season. <laughs> a Sabbath is here when Almost the whole city we gather into this place. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Now, without any gain saying, you now know that the essence of every revival is the massive in garden of souls into the kingdom. Micah chapter 4, verse 1. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established upon the mountains and exalted above the hills, and all nations. All people shall flow into it. Massive influx of souls into the kingdom in the last days. In the days of the move of the Spirit of God on the earth. Massive influx of souls into the kingdom. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 2 and 3. And all nations shall flow into it. A time is coming when we make an announcement here. How many nations are here represented this Sunday? And there will be 50. And there will be 100. They be 200. That's a revival. That's a revival. We have someone here coming in for Sunday service from Germany every Sunday. Every, that Saturday he arrives, Sunday evening he goes back to bask under the sun ray of the move of God. That's a revival. Now watch. In the name of the Lord Jesus, no one here shall be an onlooker in this move. It is by engaging in this sole purpose that you are launched to your high places. How do I mean? They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. So your high places is in turning many to righteousness. It's in turning what? Many. It's, in, it's not in confession. I mean, my high places. No, no, no. It's in turning many to righteousness. It's in turning many. Not in attempting to turn. It's in turning. It's in turning many to righteousness. It's in turning many to righteousness. It's in turning many to righteousness. The high places are not free. They are at the cost of turning many to righteousness. They don't come through because you are sitting down in church and very regular and trouble, you don't have, cause any trouble, you are just a normal 
peaceful member, chartered member of the church. Amen. Amen. You don't get promoted in an office when you are not employed because you go there every day. You say, I come here every day. When would they promote you? They don't promote you to come every day. Are you working there? Are you serving there? May you succeed in drafting many to righteousness in this season. Yeah. And may your star rise as you do. Yeah. Let me hear your discerning amen. Yeah. Let me hear your discerning amen. Yeah. Somebody's mother was sick and they have the history of untimely death in their family and carried the mother to Zona Fellowship Center and asked her to lay down there that I'm coming and went for so many. By the time I came back, mother was well. Amen. And they caught a prophetic word in church that that arrow that shot at you returns back to where it's coming from. And same day, someone died. Amen. Signs and wonders there. They accompany this day. It takes your passion for God to be in command of signs and wonders. It takes your passion. It's not a thing you cry for. It's a thing that is put into your command. Amen. He said, go to all the world and preach the gospel. And this sign shall follow them. This sign shall be at the command of those on the go. They are at the command. Somebody's child was dying and the doctor said, we can't do anything more. They put the child there. They had me speak. Early morning on Domain Radio at Covenant Hour Prayer. Go out there. Witness to Jesus. Witness about Jesus. He will take care of your issues. They left the child there. Went out under the rain. Came back. The child sat down. I'm wondering why they left him here. They were discharged the same day. Now, signs and wonders are the command of men and women that are on the go for Jesus. It's your turn. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. It's your turn. Amen. It's your turn. It's your turn. You shall not be left behind in this glorious season. Now, let me give you this good news. It will help you. I'm divine. And here are the branches. Every branch in me that bearing not fruit, he take it away. But every fruit bearing branch, he keeps fit so he can keep bearing more fruit. Listen. Every fruit bearing believer, every believer bringing souls to the kingdom, God is committed to keep them fit. Amen. So from this day, with your undying passion for souls, you shall be kept physically fit till your end of time. You shall be kept emotionally fit till the end of time. You shall remain spiritually fit till the end of time. You know the reason why? The laborers are few. So it is wisdom to keep fit the few laborers that you have. So he wants to keep us fit. We are among the few laborers that he has against every assault of sickness and disease. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, your engagement this time will establish your all round fitness in the name of Jesus. No more breakdowns. Not only for you, for your spouse. For your children. For your grandchildren. Whatever can distract your attention from serving God, my God will take care of it. 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 Everyone concerning the world back to God is called an ambassador of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. And that's where we belong. Every new creature is redeemed an ambassador for Christ with a ministry of reconciliation, turning people back to God. And Proverbs 13, 17 said, A faithful ambassador enjoys healthy living. Healthy living. So every faithful ambassador, every fruitful ambassador of Christ, reconciling the world around them back to God, is entitled to healthy living. 
Therefore, that siege on your head clears out finally today. Now, thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. He shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from you. It's not permitted to torment those who are serving him. Palako, krekiano, sankano, prekeno, radi. Now, tell that foul spirit. Expired. 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 It's one thing to have a thing. It's another thing to know the worth of what you have. Serving God forbids you to be tormented by sickness and disease. They said to Moses, what's that in your hand? He said, a rod, what's that? Ah, you don't know what is in it. Many don't know what is in serving God. They think they are just sympathizing with God. It secures your life from every assault of sickness and disease among others. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by your understanding of this right, I command an end to every torment of sickness and disease in your life. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest, amen. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Let me hear your loudest, amen. So in a revival, God turns every dry bone to a mighty man of valor. I don't care what your state of health is now. If you plug into this revival wave, my God, we raise you a man and a woman of valor. Yeah. You come out of that situation stronger than you were before you got it. Yeah. Just plug in. All you need is to plug in. All you need is to plug in. And let me tell you this. Anybody and everybody has unlimited opportunity to plug in. Why? You engage on the prayer altar, you are plugging. Praise God. And that should be comforting to all our aged and senior citizens. You can just sit there in the comfort of your room and take the prayer bulletins one by one. Today I pray for everyone on the field for utterance. Utterance, bringing conviction into conversion. In the name of Jesus, let no one on the field today return empty without a soul to show for their labor. In the name of Jesus, I pray that everyone in church, this coming Wednesday service, will meet with you. And every unsaved soul shall be saved. In the name of Jesus, grant our pastor unusual utterance to minister today. In the name, you are engaging. You are, en and God who sees your labor in secret, he said he will reward you openly. Just anybody and everybody has a place in the vineyard. Either on the prayer altar or right on the go for Christ. On the street, in your neighborhood, in your workplaces, in your marketplaces. Everybody has a place in a revival. Moses prayed his way to heaven at 120. Hallelujah. Abraham said, let's go and worship at 114. Anna was a prayer warrior at 84. So everybody has a place. Everybody. Everybody has a place in a revival. Everybody. Anybody who can say, give us this day, deliberate, has the responsibility of praying, oh, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy... Anybody who can speak can pray. So we all have a place in it. Please let no man take your crown. <laughs> Fix it firmly on your head. Don't be a regularized, chartered member of a church. No. Be an active partner with Christ in this strong wave of revival. You'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. Never regret it. Never regret it. So we are not being ambitious. Talk less of being over ambitious. No. He wants all men to be saved. How many? Oh. And all men to come to the knowledge of the truth in church. I'll give you pastors who shall feed you with wisdom and understanding. You can only come across in church. Light booms in church. Light is ignited in church. So he wants them saved and wants them in church to encounter the light that will give meaning to their life. 
So it's not our ambition. It is the Great Commission. It is the Great Commission. It is the Great Commission. Plug in today. In season, when you look like you are not comfortable, pray. It will make you comfortable. Pray kingdom advancement prayer. It will add comfort to your life. That's what it does. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. You know, when God said, put him in remembrance. Now, after doing what I command you to do, as you can't see what I say, you should see. Remind me. <laughs> Lord, did you not say that when I serve you, you will take sickness away from my body? Yes. Now, confirm your word in my life. Confirm your word in my life. Thank you for giving me the grace to serve you, but you know I'm serving you by the level of the grace you have given me. Now, confirm that word in my life. Take this sickness out of my body. Yep. Confirmed. That's what he does. Put ye me in remembrance. We serve a covenant-keeping God. The choir was singing a song. When I remember his covenant, I shout hallelujah. You can be sure that he will keep his part of the deal. Any day, any time, he abides faithful. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? One of us here gave God four reasons why he should not be sick. Why she should not be sick. She was attacked by some sickness. He said, Lord, I'm serving you. Gave him four reasons from scriptures. And God said, okay, make you no vex. Free. Set her free by reminding God. Now, this revival season must mark the end of every harassment of the devil on your life. Yeah. Come on now, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. And let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. You are free at last. Yeah. And you are free forever. Yeah. Very quickly this morning, on this covenant day of healing and deliverance, I'd like you to know that God's principal instrument for administering healing and deliverance to his people is his word. He sent his word and it healed them and delivered them out of all their destructions. Psalm 107 and verse 20. Everybody goes around, pray for us, pray for us. God he is us principally through his word. His word carries healing virtues and releases that to whosoever receives and believes that word for their healing and deliverance. He sent his word and he healed them, delivered them out of all their destructions. Now, God's word, he is us through four main channels. One, his word is said to be medicinal. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. Attend to my words, give ear to my sayings, let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they shall be life to those that find them, and health to all their flesh. The word health there is translated medicine in other translations medicine to all their flesh so god's word is medicinal they call it the balm in gilead every encounter with the healing word releases healing virtue every encounter with the healing word releases healing virtue a young chap here told the mother to read that little book healing scriptures to her to him read it again read it again he said, read that uh, page again and read it. And got free from SS. SS was turned to AA through the healing virtue of the healing world. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? That's what he does. Somebody said he read the book, You Shall Not Be Barren. And God who gave Isaac 
to Abraham and Sarah with zero sperm count, zero ovulation can do anything. She lives in the Netherlands and there she got pregnant. Every, med every medical verdict was in line with that. That is impossible. No spampa, no blah, 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 everything out of in this array. Jesus visited her by the healing virtue in the world. Somebody's free. So as you're here in the world right now, your healing is taking place. What's the healing word? The Bible says, himself took your infirmity and bore your sicknesses. Himself already took, so he can't be there. By stripes, you were healed. They cannot unstripe him anymore. So your healing, health and wholeness is settled at the cross. Settled forever. You have been bought with a price. The gruesome price of 39 stripes of wicked Roman whips. Therefore glorify God in your body. Because my body is redeemed. My body is redeemed. To glorify God. My body is redeemed. To glorify God. Not to pity my God. But to glorify my God. My body is redeemed. To glorify God. So whatever does not glorify God in your body, I cast them from the roots in this service. You don't pay for any good twice. Now who pays for anything you buy off in the shopping mall does not matter. As long as you have the receipt, you pass through the security check. It's the receipt they need. They don't care who paid for you. The receipt. Jesus already paid for you. So carry your package of healing, health, and wholeness and pass through every gate of hell with your receipt. Your receipt, I have been bought with a price for my body to glorify God. You can't perfect me anymore. Show them your receipt. Show the devil your receipt. I've been bought by the precious blood of Jesus, by the for 39 wicked Roman stripes. He's bought me of the market of sickness and disease. You are free. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Now, what that means is this. As a child of God, that sickness on your body is illegal. Come on, help me tell that situation. You are illegal. You have no right to be in my body. I have been bought with a price. The price for my total healing my total health has been fully paid. You have no legal right to reside in this body. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Number two, the word is surgical. Is able to repair any damaged part of our body. The word is surgical. Able to repair any part of our body. Genesis 2, 21 and 22, the Lord opened up Adam, took out a rib, closed it up again, and from that rib made a woman. And everything that God made, he made by his word. So God's word is surgical. He's able to pierce through any damaged part of our system and fix them. Today, the power that fixed The beautiful man, the crippled man, the beautiful gate, and strengthened his ankle bones. Carried out his surgery on his ankle and put him on his feet. 
will repair any damaged part of your body. Yeah. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It goes beyond the body. And of the joints and marrows and is a, is a designer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. God's work can penetrate any part of our body to fix whatever is off there. Therefore, today expect to see the word of God go through your system and fix every damaged part of your body. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. Say with me, God's word is surgical. Say convincingly. Convincingly. We have a woman here, one of our special daughters of Zion, who was afflicted with mouth cancer. And they say, it's too late, we can't do anything more anymore. The matter is over. They turned back to Nigeria and began to engage in so winning with cancerous mouth in the night the master surgeon appeared to her put her hand his hand into his mouth and ripped out the lump woke up in the morning cancer free went to protest in the hospital cancer free now in the name of Jesus every damaged part of anyone's body today will receive the surgical intervention of the world We are told of someone that had an accident 10 years back with a neck condition that will always require support to sit down. Now, as the word was going on, yes. the surgical power of the world penetrated. And then for the first time, did not need any support anymore. The 10 years plague ended there. Jesus, the great physician, is also the master surgeon. Is the master surgeon. He, he, he can penetrate any part of your being and my being without anesthesia, without a theater. He has the right, right there where you are sitting down, to carry out his operation on you. And you'll be free forever. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. We had the case sometimes in London of this woman that had a challenge on her waist and had been there for years. And I spoke on the surgical part of the world and went to bed. And in the night, saw these three men appeared in white as in a theater and then began to pull out strands from our waist, yellowish things like uh, spaghetti. My God. And then they said, what time is it? 5.30. Then she woke up. The time was 5.30 exactly. My God. My God. My God. The plague of many years was over. There is surgical power in the world. It will fix any damaged part of anyone's body. Amen. Today, I see him fix your body. Amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. That man was born blind. He set him free. He can fix any damaged part of your body. But may cry. He got his side back. He can fix any damaged part of anybody's body. And all by the word, all by the word, all by the word that you receive and believe, you are empowered to experience and manifest. All by the word. The word chaos is medicinal. The word repairs is surgical. There was this lady that was brought to me years ago in the old church. She was a victim of um, sickle cell anemia and one leg was shorter than the other. And they met me in the, what is it, in the reception. I said, in the name of Jesus, be made whole. Thank you, Lord. 
the shorter leg grew to meet the other one. The surgical power of the world went in to strengthen the bones. You see, at a certain stage, age of your life, your bones cannot be strengthened lengthened anymore. But not with God. It can carry out any surgery at any time. The good news is, that thing that has been disturbing you over the years, that has gone beyond the cure, he will repair it today. Also, the word replaces whatever part appears irreparable or non-existent. It replaces them. Parts that are non-existent in your body. It replaces them. That means it creates them. We know that God's word is creative. We saw it in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and God saw, and God said, and God saw, and God said, and God saw. And God saw everything that God said. Verse 31. And behold, it was very good. So God's word is creative. God's word is creative. Every time you see the dead raised back to life, is God's creative power at work. That's not healing. It is life being recreated. You say, what do you mean? Now, somebody was dead for four days and in the tomb for four days. And life was re-injected. Every living creature is created. So life is a creation of the creator. So when you hear the dead raised back to life, it is life being recreated. Life being recreated. God's word creates. I was in Durumi Church 2000 or 2001 and then there was this dead child that was kept in the third floor of the children's department. I had no idea. I went there for that all night because I had something to do in Abuja. And then I came up on the platform. It was a healing time in the church. And I took the stage and I said, It's there. No bomb in Gilead. Fire. It answered in the third floor. And life shot back in the child that died around 1 p.m. in the afternoon. That was past 12 in the night. Awesome God. God's word is creative. Satan has no power over you. And a man that was impotent, life sucked back on the spot. Now, God's word is creative. God's word replaces every non-existent or over-damaged part of your body. Amen. 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 Someone had no two ovaries, yet had two sons. Two ovaries were physically removed in a, in, in a, in a procedure before she was married. They discouraged the husband from getting married to her. But they went ahead anyway. The two sons are graduates of Covenant University today. No ovaries. I met a woman in 1983 that had no uterus. At Nips. No uterus. They have gone around the countries of the world. No uterus. And I said, hey. The thief comes to steal and to kill. But I've come to replace what the thief has stolen in his perfect form. You believe that I say yes. Now, be fruitful. She became pregnant. Uterus was created. She carried a bastard baby boy. Mysteriously, I was at a full gospel meeting when they brought the child out for a testimony. I was the one speaking that day. Amen. I said, ah. They were overjoyed. God has the power to replace whatever the enemy has stolen. Whatever the enemy has stolen from your health, from your life, from your family, whatever the enemy has stolen shall be supernaturally restored today. And God's word delivers. That woman was bound by the spirit of infirmity, whom Satan has bound for 18 years. Woman, thou art loosed. And she was made straight. God's word delivers from the clutches of the paths of darkness. How? 
The word of God is light. The oppression of the wicked is darkness. So when light breaks forth, oppression clears the way. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. And darkness comprehended it not. And darkness comprehended it not. John chapter 1 verse 5. So God's word delivers from the oppressions of the devil through the light that it conveys. When you turn on light in your room, darkness disappears on their own. No noise. No noise. No noise. So encounter with the truth We always make you an overcomer over the past of darkness. A woman in DRC was reading the book When the Invisible Forces. Amen. Invisible Battle. And in the middle of that book, it was in French, French language, she just saw a picture like a human being walked out of her body and the oppression of her life ceased. By the word. By the word, by the word, by the word, by the word. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot handle it. That's how the word delivers from all oppressions of the devil. Lift up your right hand to heaven and give God thanks because it's your day. Today is your day. Today is your day. The battle over your head is over today. Now, stand to your feet and begin to. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whatever you have caught in the world today, begin to say so. Begin to say so. Begin to say so. Begin to say so. I am not permitted to suffer the plague and the scourge of sickness and disease anymore. The price for my total health has been fully paid. I have answer to the healing virtue by the word. To the surgical virtue of the word by the word. I have access to the creative power of the word. So, Lord, today must mark the end of every scourge of sickness and disease in my life. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Now, listen, because we are in a church of people that God has blessed and God is still blessing, and we are increasing in number per day per day. There are many sicknesses that there is no medical expertise under heaven that can handle it. They are raw oppressions of the devil. There are no specialists in any medical field of life that can handle oppressions of the devil. So I'm sorry for your money. It has a horrible limit. Horrible limit. My God. It's like this thing. I'm going to Canada. I'm going to... Oh, what, what, what? So, is there no Bamigilead? There are many things that would never have medical... There is nothing wrong in seeking medical attention. But there are many things in, the, in life that would never succumb to medical expertise. They call them oppressions of the devil. Somebody was said to have brain cancer. Or what is it? Brain tumor. And only to find out that four things came out of underneath our, our tongue. There is no medical equipment under heaven that can locate that. So if they carry the brain solidly, it won't make a difference. The force behind the scene cannot be seen by any medical equipment. That's why you need a great physician to be your personal physician. He will take care of natural physiological and demonic attacks all for free 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 there are people standing here today that the next 40 years 50 years of your life, you won't know the meaning of sickness. Yeah. There are those here today, if Jesus studies, at 120, your eyes will not grow dim. Yeah. Your natural force will not be abated. Yeah. Only your God can make that happen. Yes, and now will he do it? Thou shalt serve. I will take sickness away. 
reconcile the world to me, I will make you enjoy healthy living. It's simple. Satan has lost the battle over your life. Yeah. Satan has just lost the battle over your life. Yeah. Satan has just lost the battle over your life. Yeah. Satan has just lost the battle over your life. Yeah. Satan has lost the battle over your heart. Yeah. Satan has lost the battle over your family. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please God sit out for a moment. Before we administer this fire from the altar. You are here in this service and you're not born again yet. Healing is ordained the children's bread. And anybody can become a child of God any day because the price has been fully paid for our redemption in Christ. If you are here this afternoon, you want to turn your life over to Christ, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you right there where you are. Stand to your feet and I'll pray over you right there where you are. God bless you. God bless you. God say, Jesus, save my soul. Jesus, forgive me my sin. Make me a member of your family. Stand to your feet wherever you are. And I'll be praying for you right now. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody else is standing up wherever you are. Stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. Stand to your feet. It's your chance for a change of story. And God bless you as you do. Now, at the same time, there are people here that need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. Reconnect back to their Heavenly Father. And not dry up as a branch. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please stand to your feet. And I'll be praying for you. Stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. I'm praying for you right there where you are. It will be a brand new day for you. A dawning of a new day for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, everybody standing up, please bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your right hand to heaven and pray this simple prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I may be justified. Right now, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe. My sins are now forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. By your grace, I will serve you all through the days of my life unto eternity. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, Lord, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover each one of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all satanic assaults. You will make this journey to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please complete your forms and pass them over to those church officials who handed them over to you in the first instant. And we shall be in touch with you. But be reminded that we have Believers Foundation class every Monday. And you go for only two Mondays. It's spread across the city of Lagos and Otter. Uh, about 740 locations. We will let you know which one is nearest to where you live. You can be part of that. 6 to 7.30 p.m. as we had in the announcement. And you go for only two Mondays. And then you have a strong foundation in Christ to live a young fan Christian life. Don't miss it for anything. Amen. Remember, it shall come to pass in that day that the burden of the wicked shall be taken from your shoulder. Isaiah 10, 27, and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And that day, it's not a process, that day, the day you are ready for it, the day you are privileged to be under that administration, it shall come to pass in that day. Diabetes, hypertension, high blood pressure, blood cancer, heart problem, kidney problem, I mean, any challenge on your head, it shall come to pass in that day that the burden of the wicked shall be taken away from your shoulder and its yoke from your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. He has anointed me to let the oppressed go free. 
to bind the broken hearted. My God, to give sight to the blind, hearing to the blind, I mean, to the deaf. I mean, go show John what you have heard and seen. The blind see, <laughs> the deaf hear, the lame walk, the dead are raised back to life. Man, go and show John. That's what he does. As this oil comes on your head, every yoke of sickness and disease, no matter the source, no ma whether by accident, my God, whether an oppression of the devil, whether a physiological problem, whatever problem there may be in your body, as this oil touches your forehead, they clear off like a dream of the night. You will testify. You will testify. You will testify. You saw God clear leprosy in that, I mean, epilepsy in that testimony. A woman came up here today about four different things. Asthma, seizure, uh, autism, epilepsy. In one sweep, sir. In one sweep. I said, look at me. Say, Genesis to Revelation. Can you find where they say Jesus carried any of such things? No! It's not your portion. It went off at that instance. Whatever I've called by name in your direction today, and that includes all manner of sickness and disease that will be affecting, afflicting anyone, they are declared gone. Hey! You just dip your finger and with faith on your forehead and declare with your mind, say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What you can't say, you won't see. Let them say so. You say expired. Expired. You call it by name fibroid expired. Heart disease expired. My God. Blood cancer expired. Bone marrow cancer expired. Call it by name. Call it by name. The plague of miscarriage expired. The torture of barrenness expired. My God. Whatever you say, your eyes will see. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You have to say so to see so. If you won't say so, you can't see so. What you don't say, God cannot confirm. You shall have whatever you say. So as the oil comes on your head, begin to violently declare your victory. Your victory. Call it by name. I overcome you finally today. I'm set free from you finally today. You have expired finally today. You expire finally today. I'm free from your scotch finally today. There shall be waves of instant testimonies of all kinds, of all kinds, of all kinds, of all kinds, in the name of Jesus. Stand to your feet, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Let the ministers come over, please, and let's administer this mystery of life. This mystery of life. You have heard the word, now you're having a seed of the Holy Ghost upon your head to confirm every word you have received and believed. It shall be confirmed instantly in your life. Lift up your two hands, everyone. Begin to call that unwanted plague, that scourge on your life by name. Begin to call them by name. Begin to call them by name. And begin to declare expired. 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 Paralysis. Stroke. Expired. Blindness. Expired. Deafness. Expired. Dumbness. Expired. Begin to declare them. Expired. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You shall have whatever you say. Open your mouth wide. I will feel it. You are entitled to healthy living as an ambassador for Christ. You are entitled to healthy living as one pushing the kingdom of God forward. You are entitled to help the living. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus, precious name, we have prayed. The content of these verses is hereby declared 
the holy anointing oil. Amen. As this oil comes on your forehead, every yoke of sickness and disease, every affliction of the wicked one, every oppression of the devil, they are declared destroyed. Amen. Whatever thing my Heavenly Father has not planned that is going in your life, they dry up from the roots. Every pain and ache that came with you to this service today clears off your body. Every growth in every part of your body disappears right now. Every incurable disease is declared cured in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Remember, the kingdom of God saw us violent and the violent take it by force. Don't play around this place. Please, grab it. There is so, so much presence of God in this house today. So much presence. So much. The presence of God is very strong. You are the Batmeus of today. So grab your own. You must grab your own. You must grab your own. You must grab your own. And expect instant turn around. And as Jesus turns you, touches you, just jump down in front. We celebrate God with you. Hallelujah. Please go ahead. Glory to God. Get seated and begin to call those things by name. Call them by name. Call them by name. And begin to declare, expired. 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 I'm free at last. I'm free forever. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. God is dissolving every growth in your body. He's terminating every pain in your system. He's setting back to order. Everything that's out of order. The surgical part of the word of God is working in your system right now. The creative part of the word is working in your system right now. It's replacing every missing part in your body. Now begin to declare. The violent takes it by force. Begin to declare. Enough is enough. You have wasted enough time, enough energy, enough resources over those issues. They are not permitted to be there. In a revival, every everlasting mountain clears up. Every perpetual is clear up. So you are intent to be free. You are in the midst of the year. You can't carry that burden anymore. You are not supposed to carry that burden anymore. You are not permitted to carry that burden anymore. It's your moment. It's your hour. Begin to take it. The violent, take it by force. Take your own by force. Don't sleep away. Don't slumber away. Don't watch around. Just take it. Take it by force. Take it by force. You are free. Ah, you have had so many testimonies. They must hear your own. They must hear your testimony today. They must hear your testimonies today. People must hear your testimonies today. You have had testimonies of others. They must hear your testimonies today. You have had the testimonies of others, they must hear your testimonies today. You have had the testimonies of others, they must hear your testimonies today. You have had the testimonies of others, they must hear your testimonies today. Everybody begin to declare with violence of faith, violence of faith. I'm free at last, I'm free forever. I'm free at last, I'm free forever. I'm free at last, I'm free forever. Everybody, everybody, declare your freedom, declare your liberty, declare your freedom, declare your liberty. Declare your freedom, declare your liberty. That oil on your head makes you a no go either for the devil from henceforth. Any attack launched at you, return back to sender. Return back to sender. Your home is free, your family is free, your spouse is free, your children are free, your grandchildren are free. An end has come to every touch of the wicked in your life. Now, all those have been ministered to stand to your feet while the choir leads us in praise in the name of the Lord at this time. Hallelujah. I am free from condemnation. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. I can walk through and through and live over the world. Hallelujah. 